More on the earnings trends. Our next guest is from Golub Capital, a leader in middle market lending with more than $30 billion in capital under management. The Golub Capital Altman Index has shown a high correlation with the S&P 500 as well as GDP. Joining us now to discuss how to profit from the second half of earnings season, Lawrence Golub, the CEO of Golub Capital. Lawrence, always great to speak with you. Nice to be here, Melissa. We usually get to talk to you prior to earnings season to get a preview, and here we are speaking to you right in the smack middle, you know, the heart of earnings season, the busiest week of earnings uh, so far in the season. Have you seen any surprises so far? Not really. Things tracking very closely to the data we had in advance. If you're a business selling to U.S. customers, you're doing great, and if you're not, you're not. So basically you are seeing what, what Bob sort of alluded to, and that is that the companies with more exposure to sales overseas, for instance, they're, they're seeing a less robust uh, earnings season, less robust revenue growth than the more domestically oriented companies. So in, in our index, revenue is up more than 10% for the quarter over last year, EBITDA up 12.5%. These are among the strongest numbers in the history of the index. They're as strong in terms of growth as last year. We, we expected GDP to beat, GDP did beat. It didn't beat by as much as our data would have, would have uh, said on its own because of just the effect you described, that uh, whether it's the farming sector or trade or sales overseas, uh, those, those sectors are a little weaker. It's a much better time to be a franchisor of car washes in the U.S. than it is to be Daimler. Why is business investment down or not up? Yeah, it, it, I think there's a factor that has been under-recognized or under-reported so far. Sure, trade uncertainties, foreign policy uncertainties, any kind of uncertainty creates a drag. But I think we're hearing from the Democratic Party presidential primary nominees such anti-business rhetoric, such advocacy of increased regulation and increased taxes, that that's got to be a factor. That's got to play into businesses' decisions about investment decisions they're going to make today that are only going to earn profits after the next presidential election. Very interesting. That, that's a very, uh, you're, and you're right, not many people have pointed to that. But the, but the rhetoric, not to mention the, the, the breakup talk and the, and the right. sometimes not so veiled uh, discussion of socialism uh, has got to be playing in the background somewhere. Look, you can have whatever political point of view you want, but if you're a business decision maker, you've got to take Correct. into account that if some of these policies are implemented, profits are going to be materially lower than they otherwise would be. If profits are going to be lower, you're going to invest less. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking a lot about the Fed and what the Fed should or should not do, what the Fed will do tomorrow, Lawrence. Uh, if the Fed does cut by 25 basis points as the market expects, do you think that will spur lending at all? Will that make businesses even more inclined, or is this just sort of a, you know what, we might as well just cut? I, I don't think it'll have any impact on investment or spending. I, I think the Fed is risking repeating the mistake it made in December of 1966 when, based on stock market weakness, it cut rates in the face of rising inflation. Uh, we, we see a little bit of strength in the inflation right now. You know, the only good reason to cut rates right now is just because the differential between U.S. rates and foreign rates are, are so big. But the Fed, the Fed can't pull up global economic growth. The, the Fed can only help the United States. So the domestic economy is doing really, really well. And remind us what happened in 1967 following that mistake, Lawrence. Uh, you had a big, big pickup in inflation that lasted for years, mm -hmm. triggering a, a lot of sadness in the U.S. economy. All right. We hope it doesn't come to that. That's for sure. Lawrence, thank you. Great to see you.